Welcome to the Battle Cats Beginner's Guide. This episode is on how to beat the very last of Into the Future Chapter 3, the levels of Floating Continent and Moon, which, especially Floating Continent, are markedly more difficult than the rest of the Story Mode chapter. And this is marked by the second set of anti-alien treasure. This is what you're going to be expected to have going into these stages. Treasure is massively important, and without it, levels are massively difficult, and I can't help you in any way if you don't have your treasure ready. So, you'll want all superior treasure on the first crystal. But when you reach these final two stages, you're able to get 100% of the plasma crystal after Brazil. Now, the way that I've got these treasures for tutorialing specifically means that I've only just got the final treasure and so it isn't superior. And so consider this as a base point of the guide, a point that you're able to improve from with your better treasure. See my treasure as 191% and yours as being able to go up to 200%. As for the rest of the treasures, I do not have an increased cat based defense. This could be useful for you, especially in Floating Continent. I do have a reduced Cat Cannon recharge time. My Cat Cannon should really be ignored if you've ever upgraded your Cat Cannon power. It can't be unupgraded, and the issue with it is that you're never really told about, is this increases the time it takes for the Cat Cannon to recharge. So yours will, unfortunately, likely be slower. But the Cat Cannon doesn't play such a large role in either strategy, that it should make too much difference, so you should be fine. Then I don't have any cat cannon attack power increased, so you could benefit in a sense in that way. When you have no big ticket units around in floating continent and you're trying to get your monies back up. More context on that when we see the tutorial for it later. I don't have any special attack boosts against black enemies, red enemies, floating enemies, or angel enemies. If you had an anti-angel unit with you, it could help you in floating continent, and this one, naturally it being floating, could help you in the moon. Now, as for units, you're expected to have the true form of Tank Cat, a Razor Cat, and true form Legs Cat, Macho Leg Cat. Both of these are pretty much non-negotiable, unfortunately. The reason being the Macho Leg Cat only gains an ability against aliens when it's in its true form. Minus 20 plus 10, the minimum it can be to be in true form. And a Razor Cat gains a massive amount of health relative to Tank or Wall Cat when it turns into its true form. As for Crazed, I suggest having Crazed Macho Cat and Crazed Wall Cat, but you don't need them specifically. You could swap out Meat Shields of the same cost. Warning though, they probably won't be as effective as the Crazed units, and I make a distinction of speed of Meat Shields in this guide, which might be more complicated to follow if you have different units. But really, all you're looking for in that sense is what units are slow. Crazed Dragon. This one can be swapped out with Normal Dragon if yours is a high level. As it stands for me, my Normal Dragon is level 20 plus 6, and a level 20 Crazed Dragon is much better than a 20 plus 6 Normal Dragon. Then, I'm expecting you, for these specific layouts, to have Crazed Legs Cat. And this is needed because it can do wave attacks, which not many units can. Now, you could substitute something that has a lot of area of effect, but this unit is a good one to have if you've beaten that crazed stage. Finally, crazed UFO cat. This one has a massive area of effect, and although it doesn't have much health, does a lot of damage, which is needed because we don't have many, in fact only one, anti-alien units. And this is going to provide the damage that you'd otherwise get from a unit which is strong against, massive damage against, freezing, knockbacking, slowing against aliens. If you have no specifically anti-alien gacha units then, a brute force alternative you could consider is Paris Cat. Now, for floating continent especially, but probably both of these levels, if you have a Gacha meat shield against aliens, such as Rover Cat, that would be very useful to put in. And then on the top row here, where you find the triple, I would definitely suggest putting in any anti-alien big ticket unit that you may have. You can check what anti-alien units you have through your filter, which is this button here, by going 
alien and then you could press OK to just look at what you have against aliens or you could narrow it down to specific traits here such as slow or knockback. Up here we have both of the legs units and it's important to have them on the top row because these together create a combo which increases the effect of knockback abilities which is what Aruran has, keeping the Nimoy boars of floating continent away from you. But more importantly than that, if you have an anti-alien unit, that's what you want to be using space for. As you'll come to see, Floating Continent is a thoroughly unpleasant experience for the player who's been unfortunate enough not to get any anti-alien gacha units. Now for Floating Continent, CPU is a massive part of our strategy. It makes up half of the battle, basically half of it. You're essentially preparing the CPU with as many units as possible to give it the best chance possible to use its insane spamming powers, much faster and more efficient than any player can spam, to do its part of the battle. So we need the CPU on there. You don't need Rich Cat on this one, but it can be helpful for the start of the level where there are some very difficult angel enemies. But if you don't have any rich cats, it's fine to not bring it, and I'll be showing the tutorial without bringing the rich cat. Sniper the cat can be a blessing and a curse. You'll find that where I eventually beat this level, more on the eventually later, I was using a sniper the cat. And it can be very useful for knocking the Nimoy boars back. However, it can knock them back when Bahama or Aruran or Valkyrie is about to get a very useful shot off, making them miss and thus giving you problems. Because the Sniper the Cat's going to do a lot less damage than any of those would have, and it will set you back in terms of making progress towards defeating the Nemoid Boars. So you can bring one, I wouldn't blame you for bringing one, but it's not guaranteed that it will be helpful for you. At the start of the battle, you want to upgrade your worker cat to level 3. Also make sure to turn your CPU off. We're not going to be putting that one on until the bosses come out of the base. Around about 4,500 monies when you can start to afford Bahamut, put some cautionary erasers out. Because you'll start seeing this Gabriel Doge appearing right next to you, and that's the point at which you'll want to get your Bahamut out already protected. And then you need to continue putting out these four meat shields mercilessly and without fail. Also bring out a crazed legs. This really helps with crowd control. and helps to keep back those Gabriel Doges, allowing Bahamut to hit every single one of the enemies, which you need to do every single time. And then when you get the monies for it, upgrade your worker cat. You'll see that Bahamut will probably get knocked back in this process, but as long as it doesn't die, that's fine. Dealing with these angel enemies really is a battle within itself. And when you get the monies for it, a ruin before you do any more worker cat upgrades. What I mean by that is if you get a sudden lump sum that allows you to afford it, buy it first. If something like that does happen, stop meat shielding again. We're basically starting the entire battle again, but this time with a max worker cat and max monies. So we're going to wait until these enemies are a little bit closer to the base, meat shield all of the meat shields to protect, and bring out Bahama again, and then engage the two slower meat shields. When you see the enemies clump up, you might want to bring in another meat shield because two isn't going to be strong enough to protect you. And you can use your cat cannon while Bahama is attacking to move enemies back without Bahama moving forward. And then back to the slow meat shields again. As you can see, we've almost got Aurora and back. And then once we've got that, we're going to be putting out more units and starting the battle properly. Everything except Valkyrie is now what you want to be spamming. Valkyrie is fast and gets herself in all sorts of trouble, so we want her to come out behind a massive clump of stuff after the bosses have come out to give her the best chance of surviving. Now, I'm going to offer you a risky alternative. If you feel like you want to have better chances but want to do a bit of a more difficult strat to get it, put out both of the slow meat shields only at this stage. What that will do is make your progress a lot slower, allowing you to continue the stalling process even during your run up towards the base. We're actually almost ready to get another Bahamut before we've reached the base. But as you can see, what that can result in is a lot of the stack you build up getting killed off. As you near the base and the deploy limit, it might be a good idea to go back to two meat shields again, just so that you can guarantee to be able to put your bigger ticket units, the UFO and the two legs, out as well. Get your cat cannon ready for when you hit the base and the bosses come out, because some very fast Gabriel Doges may come out, and you don't want them clipping into your army and causing you problems. 
CPU on when the bosses come out, and it will hit the deploy limit most likely. So you now, you're just leaving everything to the CPU. You've done all you can in developing a big clump. It's now up to the CPU to do its job. Valkyrie got a freeze off there, which is massively useful and something that you really want to happen. Of course, it's all down to luck, which is why you might have to do multiple runs to get this level completed. Warning, the units that you have will die as you go along. You don't want to lure in this level because the boars will chip through you and you need to try and kill them before they chip through you and get to your base meaning you want as much distance as possible between you and your base. The next thing you're watching for is if the CPU starts to run out of money. It then saves up for things at the expense of meat shields, and you always need to be putting meat shields out. So if the money's are low, take back over from your CPU for a while. As you can see, one of the Nimoy boars died there, so I've got the money to be putting the CPU back on. And again, keep watching if your money start to go low and the CPU starts to ignore meat shields. Turn it off again. When your monies are low, I'd suggest all four meat shields and the two legs as things to spam so that you can get your monies back up to a point where it's sensible to put the CPU back on. The CPU is going to be saving up for Bahamut now, so we'll just stop it from not putting out any meat shields by taking over the job ourselves once again. Okay, so this run hasn't worked out for us, and that might well happen to you as well. Probably will. We're not going to change anything about how we do the level with no anti-alien gacha units in our strategy. Again, put them in if you have them. We're going to be doing the same thing on a different try, and we're going to see if our luck is any better. Now, because this is a stage where you can use continues, you can also force close. And I'd suggest doing that, because then you're not wasting any energy or any of your items. We've had a massive stack of crazed UFOs, and they've been doing a lot of damage to the Nimoy boar. We've got one damage knockback on it, but unfortunately, we've now got two clumped together in the same space, which is going to make things very difficult. We notice that the CPU is struggling to put out all the meat shields again, so we're going to turn it off and do that ourselves. I would say on this run, I've not been very observant in doing that, so always make sure to be looking at your monies to make sure that you're catching the CPU just as it stops putting those meat shields out. When you take over from the CPU, of course, there is always the chance that your monies won't go up again. That's what happened at the end of my previous run, and that's kind of what's happening here. And when that happens, you're only going to be able to really restart your battle if you kill something that gives you a decent amount of monies, be that a Nimoy boar or a clump of the alien enemies. In this case, we got a Nimoy boar just in time. This is where, in reference to talking about the cat cannon earlier, a higher cat cannon strength gives you more chance of getting a lucky shot that kills off a unit and gives you the money you need. Don't be demoralised if that spells the end of your battle. Just don't let yourself lose, pause before you do, force close, and try again. The reason why Rich Cat might not help you massively is because although it makes the start of this battle a lot easier, what you're ideally trying to get to is a point where you might actually have two Bahamuts and two Aruruns by the time you start the battle proper with the bosses coming out. And if you have Rich Cat, and that allows you to move forward more quickly, you won't have the opportunity to get two of each unit out. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have realised that I haven't been able to do that either, and that's because, well, it's very difficult. But it can help you significantly if the stalling goes in such a way that you manage to do so. This is more like it you see here. I'm going to put one crazed cat out so that it can get to the front of the battle quickly, but then just slow meat shields after that. We've managed to get two Aurorans out on the battlefield at the same time. I'm going to continue with my slow meat shields, but we're going to start our slow crawl forward now towards the base. With two Aurorans around, it's unlikely that we're going to be able to keep stalling in the same place for much longer. So let's use the momentum that we've got and carry it forward. Cat cannon on, CPU on, let's go. There's a freeze from Valkyrie. Again, you can see how invaluable it is in stopping the Nimoy boar from moving forward. And the CPU's run out of monies, so let's take over ourselves. And there's a Nimoy boar gone, so we can let the CPU go back to its own job. You're starting to see the patterns here across the different runs. Okay, that one hasn't worked either. On to the next one. Managed to get a second Bahama in our battlefield. I'm going to spam everything except for Valkyrie now that we're at the base. Wait for the bosses to come out of the base and see if this run can be the one. We also have Sniper the Cat on for this battle. It should help for pushing the Nimoy balls back when Aruran is not doing so. 
you can see that our clump is holding up against the Nimoy bore a lot better than it seems to have before, partly because of how much stuff we were able to get in one place. And then of course, the large old part of luck. And unfortunately, the luck has run out. These units at these levels are good enough to beat the level, but they're certainly not good enough to beat the level every single time. Now, for previous levels, such as Into the Future Chapter 2 Moon, I've suggested using a continue if you get a good run. And you may think from how difficult this level is that if you get a decent run, although you can't actually tell because it won't give you a boss health percentage because there's more than one of them, you'd use a continue and just get the level done. The problem is, is that you want to be fighting as close to their base as possible. And as you start from your base after a continue and the enemies will spawn instantly and will be heading towards you, that's already most of the real estate of the battle gone and you'll get chipped away very quickly. When I forced my way through Floating Continent to try out Moon for this tutorial, I used probably around 150 cat food to do so, which I would not recommend to anyone. If you're using a continue, you should only really be using one where you can't reasonably get the level done in one run. So I really would only recommend using a continue if there's only one Nimoy bore left when you lose. Although you wouldn't have been spamming crazed UFO previously when your units were nearer to your base, when they're further away you can start to spam it because by the time it gets to the front of the battle you're likely to be at their base anyway. And that helps you to start building up a larger stack. You can see that the freezing here is allowing a massive clump to appear. We've got Bahamut, Valkyrie and Arun at the same time, which is very rarely the case as demonstrated by Bahamut's death. But the damage has been done to the Nimoy boars. This might be the run. The cat cannon actually timed perfectly with the Arun shot. We got a knockback and then another knockback. That's not always going to happen. And the majority of times that I've seen anything happen with a cat cannon and the Aruran has been the cat cannon interrupting the Aruran. So just bear in mind that you're not alone in that happening to you. And there we go. There's a Nimoy bore death that we needed. We cannot withstand two together. We can't really withstand one at a time. We're desperately always doing as much damage as we can to stop them chipping through us in such a way that kills everything. Two at the same time is just distinctly impossible to deal with. Unfortunately, it usually happens that there's two or even more at one time. So when you get one on its own, things are looking good. And you know where else you should be looking? At your monies to check that you're always getting your meat shields out. Turn the CPU off, replenish your meat shields, and hope for a cash injection that gives you enough monies to keep the fight up. Okay, I think we're going to have to risk putting a Valkyrie out here using the monies that we've got. Hopefully that will give us a stab haha, at victory, doing the damage that we need to do. Even when it's a good run and you get good luck with your freezes, it's still going to be nip and tuck. And there we go. Just all the three Nimoy boars in the level have been defeated. Now that has taken a good two hours of my time trying to record to this point. So please do not be demoralised if things don't look like they're coming together for you. It didn't look like they were coming together for me. To reiterate, this strategy is enough to beat this level. You putting in your anti-alien units will do this strategy a whole world of good. Keep an eye on your meat shields as you've been doing throughout the battle, because the last thing you want to happen is to lose after you've done the difficult bit. And there we go. Floating continent... A whole world of pain completed. Moon is actually a significantly easier level than Floating Continent. This is the strategy, Macho Leg and Crazed Legs at the top for the combo of increased knockback. And then we've got the triple up here so that we've got a kind of themed top row of longer recharge time units. Now, Valkyrie, you can take it or leave it. I find that it supports the big ticket legend unit or gacha unit that you may be using quite well. 
But equally, you could actually take away Valkyrie and replace it with a cheaper anti-alien gacha unit such as Psycho Cat, even Seafarer Cat, for example. And then you can use that as support for your big ticket unit. Along the bottom, then, we have four meat shields, as we're used to, and then Crazed Dragon Cat, which we're going to stack in kind of a similar way to Chapter 3 Moon of Empire of Cats. In fact, it might be helpful to think of this level in a similar way. Of course, you wouldn't have had Bahama Cat back then, but the way in which we approach the level is actually very similar. So, no items needed. Start off with a Worker Cat upgrade, the very start of the level, isn't right in your face but we'll soon see some cellar boodles appearing and they do quite a lot of damage and the object is going to be to stall them so we're going to start off with some erasers and then we're going to get macho leg out and then crazed legs and that will provide some nice crowd control waves and then we're just gonna meat shield after a little bit of initial meat shielding miss out both of the erasers and just move to having both the cheaper meat shields. And the reason you want to do this is because cellar boodles do a massive amount of damage, so much that your more expensive meat shields will die in one hit the same as your cheaper ones. So you might as well save the money now, when one Celeboodle is dead, if you're able to respond quickly enough, which sometimes might not happen, let yourself be killed by that one Celeboodle and then start stalling it again. This will just give you more time. That one was actually very low health, so you can see there how occasionally it might not be possible to respond because they might both die at the same time. Now, the base in Moon is also more favourable than that of Floating Continent. It takes quite a lot of chomping to get that base down to health where the Awakened Bahamut comes out. In this level, we're going to be luring to our base and pushing back through. And that's because this Awakened Bahama enemy can be stalled quite effectively. Just by four meat shields, our dragon stacking, our legs, and one of the three legends. We're going to be putting them on rotation so that we can always have one out at any given time. And we're not left like we are so often in Floating Continent where there's nothing at all. Because one legend can sustain the stalling. A rich cat isn't really that necessary because as long as you don't have something really strong up at the base, it is gonna easily get you to full monies before the Awakened Bahamut comes out of the base. In fact, I might even make things a little bit quicker by sending a tiny little vanguard up to the front of the battle. But you just need to keep your units for when the boss comes out because you're gonna be luring it over to your side of the battle. And here it is. So, start putting a razors out when you see the Awakened Bahamut. They'll move very slowly and provide an initial layer of protection against what is a very fast unit. Then all of your meat shields and one big ticket unit of your choice. I'm going to put a Ruin out here. It doesn't really matter which one you're using because really you're stalling it, doing some damage to it repeatedly until the battle ends. Now the fact that we're only putting one legend out at a time is the reason why I'm not bringing a CPU with me. Also, it's not too taxing putting out the meat shields in this stage. Now, although you can bring out Valkyrie as the one legend unit if you need to, I've found that it can be quite good to pair Valkyrie up with the one of Aruran or Bahamut that you have out at a given time. My suggestion would just be to definitely not have both Aruran and Bahamut out at the same time. You don't need them in order to stall Awaken Bahamut with the levels that these units are at, and it's just increasing your risk of being left without any big ticket unit. Now, we had a very lucky moment there with dual Valkyrie freezes. That's unlikely to always be happening to you, but even so, the stalling of the four meat shields and the knockback from the damage and the Aruran should be enough to keep this Awakened Bahama away. And the knockback from everything else and the damage from Bahama is what's going to keep it away when you're on the Bahama leg of your battle. The way in which this is like Chapter 3 Moon, you'll see, is because you're bringing out a solid wall of meat shields with a stack of dragons behind it and Valkyrie as well. It's actually surprising that my Valkyrie is still alive here. Don't expect it to last this long. And there we go. There's it gone. We're going to get another one to match up with the Aruran here because the monies are healthy enough that if the Aruran dies, we can start the Bahama leg of the battle. By which point afterwards, we should be able to start an Aruran one again because it will be off recharge time. And there we go. There is Awakened Bahamut defeated. 
Now, I can't imagine that it will go as smoothly as this for many of you because it hasn't gone this smoothly for me before. This, basically, in contrast to the runs you've seen in the previous level, is a perfect run and just shows how different runs can be. This one went very well indeed. We didn't even need to employ the use of Bahamut, but if Aruran had died, we would have done exactly the same thing as we were doing there, but with Bahamut as our main legend unit. And so that is it for Into the Future 3 and the Battle Cats Beginner's Guide? I'm going to say it with that intonation and leave it there. If you have any questions on these levels, any struggles, please detail them as much as you can. What you've done, what treasure you have, what unit levels you have, because those are always the first things that I suggest to people. Get your treasure up to full, get your units up to the maximum level you possibly can. But please, if you have any struggles, write down in the comments what your struggles are and hopefully I can help you. But until I see you again, I hope you have enjoyed the Battle Cats Beginner's Guide. I bid you goodbye, and I hope you enjoyed.